Hi all, let's have a look at a recent Magnus Carlsen game from the World Cup. So this was in round one against a very talented up and coming player from Nigeria, Balogun. Let's have a look at this game. So E4 from Magnus and we have D6, D4, G6. So this is the modern defense or Ravash. Knight F6, Queen E2. Now here, Knight C6 is played, hitting that D pawn. Knight f3 protecting that. Bishop g7. Magnus castles. Uh, castles. <laughs> so bishop g4, threatening. Knight takes d4, potentially. This pawn is protected. Now black castles. h3. Black voluntar voluntarily gives up that uh, light square bishop and hits at the dark squares immediately with e5. So we have a kind of King's Indian style position potentially if white closes the center. After Queen e8, in fact, Magnus did close the center here. Knight e7, Queen e2, and black plays it like a King's Indian. So Knight h5, so going to potentially pawn storm on the king side. We have an intriguing uh, tempo game. It's very, very useful to be able to reroute the bishop potentially over here, but also on b5. It causes some annoyance potentially if black wants to play a6. He's weakening his queen side. So at the moment the queen's hit and goes to c8. And we have knight a3. Now in normal king's Indian style positions, this bishop is usually on e2. Let's see, a6, the bishop drops back. f5, the bishop goes to c2 here. f4. And it's quite dangerous with f3 being threatened. So Magnus actually doesn't mind the exchange of queens here, which also further weakens black on the light squares. That queen is taken, and now knight f6. And now g5. It looks as though this might be risky if it's, if it's away from the other pawns. Is it gonna be in danger later? But it's difficult to imagine how it can be arranged to attack it. It will take some moves to do that. Knight c4, b6. Because actually knight a5 might be annoying. So b6, b4. And it looks as though a4, a5 would provoke b5. And then later c4. And that looks like a good plan with the pawns on the queen side in the long term. Now this pawn, it looks as though maybe there could be an idea to, to hit it with bishop e7, but it wasn't actually tried. In fact, this pawn is dissolved now with h6. Magnus took that and now closes up basically, making use of this pin, he closes up the king side with g4. So it can't be taken because of that bishop takes h6. So closing up the king side, and now after f3, he's got some extra squares for his king. He, he can even use the h file. It reminds me of the Shirov plan against the king's engine, which is an early g4. So bishop g5, king g2, king g7. So both sides share that h file. a4, bishop h4, bishop d2, g5, as if maybe knight g6 and the knight coming later to h4 is dangerous if you can imagine bishop g3 and knight h4 rook h1 knight g6 king f1 rook h8 king e2 so the rooks are holding each other connecting rooks so it doesn't really matter about any potential bishop g3 and knight h4 now the king is holding f3 so it seems very very solid over here and still white has that long-term plan of a5 to try and provoke b5 and then undermine with c4 later Bishop g3, a5, this is now happening. So it's actually looking very dangerous for c4 here because it's going to get a two to one majority for white, potential pass pawn later. Knight e7, c4. Now knight e7 was to be able to play c6 here. d takes, knight takes. And now with knight d4 check emerging, that's parried. A pair of rooks come off. And now b takes c4 so we have this pawn majority 
And also the B6 square is potentially useful, but D6 is eyed immediately as well. Rook B8 counter-attacking on B4, just leaving the D6 pawn to go. Mengs actually takes that because it's a route into that F5 square. And here actually it seems uh, very dangerous to take here, in fact, seems uh, very, very dangerous. King g6 was played. It's it's actually a very, very bad uh, position. Uh, so King g6, and now knight f5, and the game ended here. To give you some examples in this final position, let's see, if bishop h4 to stop rook h6, Black is a pawn down here anyway. Uh, but let's say rook d1 looks very strong for rook d6. And so say knight e8 to protect that. Bishop a4, it can, it can be a disaster scenario like this, really. So it does seem a hopeless position. And on knight takes b4 here. Uh, let's imagine knight takes b4. Then this check is very dangerous after bishop takes e5 hitting the rook so it makes this taking the pawn a bit pointless and as, as well as f6 so there's no way of defending f6 and b8 so yeah a very interesting positional game there for magnus uh, from the opening he got that sort of trump card that knight square bishop and he sort of rerouted it via b5 with tempo to c2 a bit of an unusual configuration because it was like a king's engine style position but with some major differences Without the light square bishop, it's quite well known that the attacks in the king's engine are often less dangerous if you can get rid of that light square bishop. And that was like essentially taken off earlier in the game. So an interesting game there. Uh, maybe some instructive points there. Okay, comments, questions, like, shares. Appreciated. Thanks very much.